Hi everyone, number one Marmaduke fan here, and we are looking at Seven Billion Needles, Volume One by Nobuaki Tadano. Now, uh, I, I haven't found Volume Two through Four of this book, but when I read Volume One in high school, I just remember this scared the socks off of me. This was the most horrifying villain I've ever encountered in any comic book at the time I first read it. It terrified me. Now, looking back at it, on it as an adult, I uh, yeah, the, the villain is kind of terrifying, but I think it does a really good job of balancing the ver the murderer, the, the villain's murders with the hero's journey. So in my conclusion is, yeah, there's some really scary stuff in this that's not good for younger readers, but it does a good job of having balance and not like celebrating the blood and guts in the gore. It's using the, the, the evil villain's murder to contrast with a really sweet kick butt young young girl with problems becomes a hero story and uh let's let's dig right into it so seven billion needles is based on a old hard sci-fi classic needles which i only know that because i read it on the back and i'm gonna have to go look up needles to see how the adaptation works but i think they kind of brought it into contemporary japan of the 80s or 90s when this was first published it's got a really interesting perspective on alien life. So the main girl is Takabe and she just put, she's always got her headphones on. You know, they even like write out the sound effects of the, uh, what, what's it called? It's got like a he set loud bass. So, it, you know, you can even hear like the bum bum, pss, pss, bum bum, pss. and that's true of her throughout the manga. So she's a very isolated kind of antisocial girl and Takabe uh, goes out to just be alone. And one thing I'll note about this artist's style is that uh, this artist makes frequent use of photo, photo reference. Uh, but since this is set in Japan, this may be set where the artist, near where the artist lived. That means that the artist is able to get like a lot of extra detail into the world. And even though it is very noticeable that photo references are being used, I think this is a good way of adding some detail to your backgrounds if you're still not confident in your ability to make it up yet and if you want your world to have the flavor of a real place so maybe if you were a little maybe a, maybe the artist could be a little bit more artful about dis disguising the photo reference but a as it is the the effect is even though it is kind of noticeably photo referenced it still does help you immerse immerse you in this japanese world with all of this little detail in it also this artist almost never uses the manga kind of weebisms like you know silly emote faces so i would call this like a really good manga for people who typically don't like manga because it avoids using some of like the silly things that are peculiar or unique to manga and uh it tell just tells a kicking strange sci-fi story in, in the format of comics so at when Takabe, is that her name? Takabe, yeah. I, I hate having to learn all these new names. I guess that's part of the fun of it too, is learning all these new names. So Takabe looks into the sky and like it's blasted. Yeah, maybe, I wonder if this is like an allusion to nuclear warheads or something. She's just wrecked and she wakes up and you think, oh, well, was it all just a dream? Maybe you think that's what it is, but maybe, but maybe there's more to this. So the concept of this world is that there is alien life, but alien life doesn't exist in like a physical body. Alien life exists as plasma with consciousness. And the plasma explains it as the air is stiff in our world and it requires a consciousness in order to kind of inhabit this world and move about in our atmosphere. So at first it just feels like she has voices in her head or a voice coming through her mic, uh, her headphones and what's, uh, charming about it is that Takabe uh, kind of, it, it's a comedic way of reacting, but it's almost realistic. Like if you had a voice in your head saying like, I am the great, you know, energy being, and I am on a mission to protect all life from the ancient evil energy being, like you wouldn't be so gung ho to like go, you know, into the time chamber like Goku and become a super duper badass. You might think you were a bit nuts. You wouldn't, you'd want to ignore the voice and this shows us Takabe's problem, which is that she's antisocial, she's disengaged, she's just sort of a grumpy, angsty teenager. But even as she's portrayed as an angsty teenager, she's sort of comedically 
angsty, so you, you can't help but like it. I, I, as a piece of writing, I really like that a teacher kind of gives her a talking to in the first chapter, which really sort of establishes what Takabe's problem is. It's a great way of communicating to the reader what the broad theme of the book is, which is that uh, you know Hikaru Takabe, she's, she's got to become mature. She's got to uh, come out of her shell and stop just like locking herself in her headphones in this own little her own little world. She needs to interact with people in the real world a little bit. As that's going on, uh, she's slowly discovering the powers that this ancient energy being. He calls himself Horizon, even though they don't really have names. These energy beings. Horizon has granted her this power, but there's an evil counterpart. And the evil counterpart, this is where this, the needle in the haystack metaphor comes in. The, the evil counterpart operates by possessing someone and just starting to murder. And if the, the host body is killed, then it just moves like a virus to a new body. And uh, Horizon describes this as a, a kind of virus which will gradually destroy all life on Earth. And that's such a terrifying idea because because these are energy beings, because they can live forever, that means this thing is patient. It doesn't have a plan to blow up the Earth. Its plan is to pretty much just be a serial killer for all times until we run out of until we run out of things to kill. And it's horrifying. It's terrifying. Uh, and the problem is, if they lose track of it, they'll never find it again. It'll be lost in the in the seven billion needles. So it's up to Horizon and Takabe to do something, but. Takabe is hesitant to, to do anything. And there's some really great co uh, comedy based on this, where Horizon, of course, has a big view. He's thinking about you know saving all life on planet Earth, and he's an energy being, so he doesn't really get human relationships that much. But he has a moral code, which is that he will not uh, remove the will from any life form, even if he inhabits a life form. He will not take their will away and use them as a puppet. And this has guided Horizon all its life, whatever gender, zizim, zur you want to give to an energy being. Uh, Takabe, though, at, as she's trying to cope with this voice in her head, she starts to come out of her shell a bit and make some friends. And there's a really great gag I won't spoil where Horizon just doesn't get <laughs> what, what girl, what girl chatter is all about and he, he, he's kind of it kind of drives him nuts so the, it's a great little back and forth between Takabe and uh Horizon uh maybe for parents there's like one censored boob where they put like I think it was it was a really good stealth center so she's like in the tub you would have seen one of her boobs but they put a little English translation right above it so hey good job that probably kept this from getting like a mature rating in the English market uh, so I would say this is for older readers. The, you know, the, the scary villain murders some people, and some it's like so freaky how how he does it. But if you do have an older reader, I think this is, the moral of this story is a really really good moral, both for Horizon and for Takabe. So she learns to come out of her shell. She learns to have friends. She learns to have a self sacrificial attitude. Horizon learns about what's the deal with like these human people and their relationships. And uh, that's her. I'm not going to show her in the shower just since it's YouTube. But oh, yeah. Oh, and there's some like shocks. There's some. Uh, how would I describe it? OK, the closest thing I can imagine is like Japanese body horror where, you know, a character will have like, you know, extra body parts coming out of them. That's like what the villain uh, does at some times. And he'll like absorb the, the lives of people he wants to kill. So that is terrifying. That could give a younger kid nightmares but in the context of this story it just sets up a really freaky evil monster for Horizon and Takabe to take down and the closing climax is phenomenal it's absolutely a phenomenal closing climax and if this when I say that this is a good manga for people who don't like manga like if this was an action movie if this was a 90s action movie or if this was a today action movie where they have good CGI this would be a freaking this would be a freaking hit i think because it, it would deliver a humor it would deliver like the moral heart of a good hero story and it would deliver on like the kick butt action se sequences between super powered beings and even the the idea of the aliens makes the so many stories about like oh super powered dude versus super powered dude the idea of the aliens and how they're kind of consistent with being ancient energy beings versus teenage girls with like teenage girl problems that's uh that's done with humor and it's done with uh seriousness at the same time so i think this is probably one of the best serious manga you could pick up 
for an exciting her heroic adventure story. Uh, I never read volume two through four. It has a pretty satisfying conclusion. Like it leaves you at the edge, you know, wondering what's going to happen next. But I think it's a mark of a good story. If you can just read volume one and say, this is kicking. And I feel like she's had she, that the main character has come to a point where they, they are now a hero. They are, they've gone from being just a weird little teenager to being an actual hero. So I am going to look for volume two through four. Now this will scare you. It will excite you. Excellent, excellent, excellent work. And I highly